It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1969, recorded Thursday, January 4th, 2024. The worst of 2023. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have the worst gadgets of 2023. Let's see if you agree. All next on the Gizwiz. It's the same dumb show with Dickie D. And OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing, growing LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now! And I've been the worst host of 2023. Here's our best host, Dick D. Oh. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing good? We uh, had a fantastic New Year's Eve party, and I've decided to leave up. Oh yes, to let to leave it go a bit. Some yeah. of the decorations, also to remind me what year to write down and say at the end of the show, <laughs> uh, what year we're in is just a reminder. Uh, but we yeah. had a fantastic New Year's Eve show, which lives on on our YouTube channel, not on our website. But oh, that's wanna, great. That's yeah, great. check it out. Check out our yeah. YouTube page uh, to. Enjoy us bringing in the new year and chatting along with everyone. It was a lot of fun. Um, no, anything anything ha exciting happened this year? Boy, you know what? Since that show, I just took everything to the warehouse and um, w went down to the park to see if they had brought in this, the uh, shredding machines yet. Um, <laughs> in Riverside Park, there's a big drop your Christmas tree here. And they and, shred it. And I think I might have mentioned is that uh, Christmas Eve, all the stands that didn't sell their Christmas trees bring them down to the park and throw them on the pile. <laughs> um, so when they bring the trucks in to shred them all, the smell is great. And it, it's great. The park springs in um, Riverside Park cloth bags, and you can – Take a shovel and fill. Take a whole bag of mulch home. Oh wow! And it'll fill it from you right from the back of the chipping machine. Yeah. So oh, I'm looking I forward. I didn't realize to that it was like a community mulch drive. At the same time, I thought they would fill. I don't know. I thought they would either cart it away or sell it or use it in the parks or something. Oh, That's they cool. yeah. They, they, they use it a ton of it in the parks. That's it's so it's cool. great. It's That's great. Really, really cool. Um, yeah. Well, this is the worst of 2023. We take a look back at some of the gadgets that we've all. We actually, we look. I looked at every gadget that we covered last year. As I did too. And put it in a category. We have the worst of this week. Next week, I'll be at CES. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who has supported our CES fundraiser. You guys are. Absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you head to our website, gizwiz.tv, at the top of it is a banner uh, or a little tab to take you to the fundraiser. There we are, 66% of the way there. Someone asked, I think on our New Year's Eve show, what happens if we don't make it to 100? Uh, and I think we decided we'll still f film 100% of the episodes, but stop it at 66% of the way in. <laughs> And just fill the rest with black. I think that was there the... You go. Uh, that, that's a perfect way to do it. No, we're, we're still going to go to CES. Everything that... This is just how much it would be if there was nothing extra out of pocket. It's just a big thank you from, from you guys to us, really. And uh, we want to say thank you for supporting the fundraiser so much. So uh, we're still going... Everything's going to be the same. It's just, uh, it's just a thank you. It's just a tip on top yes. of uh, everything else. So... Um, there'll be uh, there'll just be no eating. Yeah, exactly. I'll <laughs> you know uh, the last night might get a bit dodgy on where <laughs> we're gonna see how the win is with twenty four hour yeah. slots, a penny each every minute. So I think well, that yeah, we the can. Good thing is the first two nights, Pepcom and Showstoppers. The, oh, yeah. tons of food. Exactly. But, we got food covered those eggs. days. <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, just want to say thank you uh, to everybody who has supported the fundraiser so far. Um, so the worst gadgets of 2023. Now, we shared lists 
Your list that you sent me had way more best of best gadgets, and so I filled out a little bit of the worst gadgets, and I think that I got a lot more crappy corner things <laughs> on this list. Well, yes, but it fits the category. It really does. And if it was Chad's incredibly amazing, wonderful <laughs> corner, Chad's best gadgets best corner, yeah. different story for sure. Um, and this is just going to be a look back at all, all these kind of crummy gadgets uh, that we've talked about. So I'm going to take over the first one. Uh, this was the Magic Bean Garden Kit. I think, I forgot what the theme was for the crappy corner this week. Here was the box of it. The point was that these lima beans had messages written on them. And as they grew, you would see the message in the plant. Um, the plant... Uh, it was just the plant, but the the pot you could paint. It came with a paint set. You got these weird glitter things to go on top. It was a whole process of making the thing. It was it was a very DIY sort of art project. Um, and it, it, when we re reviewed the video. We had a whole bunch, or reviewed the product uh, on the video. We had a whole lot of fun putting it together, but of course, I wasn't going to grow the plants overnight, you know, or you know, in an hour up until recording the show. So we decided to put them in the ground and see if they would grow. And we got some leaves, but we never actually got the message, any of the messages from them. Yeah, and I was didn't pretty... only one plant grow. And only one plant grew, and as you can see, we planted two beans. It just, it really seemed like all I had to do was water it, <laughs> and it still didn't do anything. So, um... Captain, Captain Jay said he bought, he bought it for his mother, and she hated it. She hated it! So, yeah, hated this is, it. <laughs> this is in the worst category, I think, for sure. I think you could kind of avoid this. Here's what I did with the, uh, interesting little stuff on top. It was kind of fun the first day, but it was very disappointing that all that time had gone into it and and nothing <laughs> nothing grew. The actual magic beans didn't work out. So I think you can save thirteen dollars on the magic bean set. <laughs> okay. And also I think I have another another example of how I just do not have a green thumb and plants die around me. I, it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, okay, what's uh, you should take okay, over a gadget so now. I have the Coco Sun waste fan. <laughs> I remember now, this. Do you remember this? This was very bizarre. So, for some reason, it has a flashlight, huh? And then have to hold this in. And, okay, so that's, it's, it's a little bit on the loud side, but what was bizarre is you're supposed to wear it, and, and it's expensive, 40 bucks, and you're supposed to wear it on your waist, but I realized later, under your shirt. Yeah, is we realized this, I think, on the show, there's all these images of them, yes, of the, yes, of it on your waist, and we're thinking this doesn't do anything. There's no, no it way. Does, no, it does. Like no, this is the dumbest fan we've ever seen. The only good thing is, it's ten thousand milliamps and it has charging out. But at forty bucks, you can buy a real charging device. It just, it, this didn't make this sense. This didn't make any we sense. Did, we finally we figured out that case. these clips, it could clip under the shirt because this yes. is like the one image that showed it. And it makes a bit more sense when you think of it that way. <laughs> but Ex and, and also, I think maybe the reason they put a waist clamp on is it weighs almost 14 ounces. Oh, my. So, no, that's a, that's a lot of weights. You certainly don't want to carry this around with you. And and also, if you were using it on your face, it's kind of on the loud side. So you don't want that either. And let me just crank it up again. I, it's industrial design makes it look like something that you'd buy at 
Home Depot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you can hear it there. Yeah. You can hear it. Well, yeah. It's blowing me away, Diggy D. Yeah. So I, I do not buy it. 40 yeah. bucks. Yeah. That's, it's and too expensive. It's kind of interesting that normally when you find a gadget, there are 30 other people making the same thing. Yes. There yes. There is no one I've seen making another waste fan. So, um, I'm realizing that the fur zapper actually is in the wrong list, Dickie D. I actually ended up liking this gadget. Oh, I says, see that. It says in my notes, oh, I really like it. I'm realizing that I put it in the wrong list. So I'm holding that back uh, for next week's. Um, so I'm going to skip that one. Okay, um, very good. And I'll, go, okay. I'll just go to the next one. The Incredible Edible Spoons. So this was, oh gosh, this was another crappy corner. I can't remember the theme again. But I found these spoons that you could eat. And we did just that. I, I got the spoons and I tested out um, trying them in a soup. And then I ended up eating the spoon after. They had different flavors of these spoons. I ended up getting like peppercorn. This was a Shark Tank product. Um, and I got to say, I was a little underwhelmed with the gadget. The, the spoons are a little funky. They don't really hold a lot. Um, eating them was definitely weird. They didn't taste great. Um, <laughs> Becky is were saying, they, OMG, what, I bought they some and they were horrible. Flavors, do you remember? Say it again. Did they come in different flavors? I can't remember. They did, but, the, but one pack was one flavor. I think that they had a, uh, like a sun-dried tomato flavor. And then I had this pepper flavor. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it was like a stale, stale, stale <laughs> uh, saltine is kind of the flavor that I was I was getting. And the other reason that I put them on the worst list is I went back and just looked completely sold out. And they have oh. on their website, we're thrilled that you're interested in edible cutlery, but we're currently sold out. We'll be back at the end of February 2024. February oh of 2024 is when they're going to sell, sell the spoon again. Um, so they have these, I did see they have these edible straws, which I've actually seen edible straws in other places too. Um, and those actually work uh, pretty good here. What is that other flavor? I'm trying to remember. Uh, this is all about sustainability. Dang it. I want to know about your spoons. <laughs> spoons. Yeah, they only have the one. Um, but yeah, so ended up not, the, while reviewing it, didn't love it. And then um, seeing that they just don't even have them in stock felt a little bit like, <laughs> okay, well, this is an easy... This is a pretty bad gadget if uh, you're not even able to buy them uh, right now if if you wanted to. Um, I don't know. Were you impressed by the edible spoon? Did you think that this is the newest no, technology? You know what? I, I My guess would be if you were a neat freak or a, a totally green person and you went on a picnic, you would say, okay, now everybody eat your utensils right. so that... Don't have to throw them away. So it might work out for that. The only other thing I could think of is like, a, a, I've seen a lot of disposable cutlery at theme parks, you know, but I think that these would have to be made so inexpensively um, in order for that to work. And then I forgot the other issue with these was that they did expire because they were a food product. <laughs> oh, oh my god. And so that adds a whole other element of this isn't something you can just keep like plastic cutlery in a pantry. You do got to keep an eye on when the date is going to pass <laughs> that they um, expire. Oh, okay. Um that was another thing that uh, I think mine had expired or were really close to expiring. <laughs> uh, and I got them on sale because of that. So 
Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, right, so children today, we're not, we don't have any food to eat. But fortunately, <laughs> each one of you can eat six spoons. Six spoons. Exactly. That's the feeling I got. Uh, I, love, I love spoons and milk <laughs> for, spoons and for milk, my yeah. cereal. I love spoons and milk. Yeah. Um, each five spoons save one spoon for dessert. <laughs> exactly. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, just cr Oh, I like my spoons cracked. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in a bowl. Um, yeah, that, that's, it, anyway. <laughs> okay, the, give us another worst gadget. Uh, okay, did. so this is from Five Below, and it was there. <clears throat> I think I was disappointed because the way they marketed it as the prismatic projector uh, sp uh, wireless speaker. <clears throat> I think I got a piece of spoon caught in my mouth. <laughs> anyway, the, I... I forgot normally when I buy very cheap things, I buy two of them. I do have to take a drink here. I <laughs> yeah, please do, Diggy D. I'll, <laughs> I remember this was from Five Below, and I think one of the things that really was disappointing about it was the one LED in the center of it. It was <laughs> yes, so exactly. underwhelming. I, actually, I brought one to the to the uh, table here, and. There, there is the projector. There's the one LED in there. The problem is it lights the rim a little bit, but if you put something next to it, it has to be. The thing is the charging cable, uh, and, and, and it's not rechargeable. It has to be plugged in all the time. And the cable I put in doesn't let it reach all the way to the camera, but it it doesn't project on the ceiling. If you put a paper, oh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm doing it there. If you put a paper next to it. You could see a reflection up to perhaps three inches away. Um, again, it was just five fifty-five, I think. So like that's with on it that on. Score, that <laughs> a kid would like it. A kid would like it, and the sound was not horrendous. Oh, there you go. It's, yeah, this it seems like something that's um, it's like a nightlight speaker. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. There you, there you go. If, that's if all describe. the other lights are off. Yeah, it might look pretty cool, but uh, it yeah, it's not that great. It was only five dollars, right? Yeah, is it the five or five fifty five? Oh, seven. There oh, it is. Oh my! Oh, whoa! Woo! It was woo! in there. It they may have there. raised the I, price. They may have. High tech bin. <laughs> prismatic projector. They really know how to sell these things. Prismatic projector. I assume the prismatic is just because it has like this halo yes, prism. Yes, yes, exactly. And I thought it was going to throw a little bit of light on the ceiling, maybe. Yeah. But it, it doesn't throw enough light to... It, it throws enough light to light the sides. That's about it. <laughs> Spaceman 626 kind of summarized what we were saying is, in the absence of any other light, it <laughs> might work. Yeah, that really does kind of summarize this gadget yeah, and I why it's, it's on the worst of list. <laughs> In the absence of any other light, it might work. Yeah, that's not so great. Um, okay, the next one. This is another one from the crappy corner category. Um, I thought actually after uh, seeing this gadget that possibly... I would come around to enjoying it and liking it. It was the Spatty and the Spatty Daddy, which is the weirdest name for a gadget I think we've ever covered. And I think it was in the in the they named it in the time frame of of the uh, uh, what is it the um, uh, oh, Scrub Sponge Daddy, Daddy Scrub Daddy. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, Scrub Daddy, right? The Spatty Daddy and it's kitchen spatula. So. Um, this is a tiny, teeny tiny spatula made to reach to the bottom of jars. That's the point of it. Um, one of the issues that I had with mine was that it arrived broken. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, so as you can see that it's just completely broken. The other issue that I had with it was kind of finding a use for it. Because yeah, the idea of a tiny spatula makes sense when you kind of first hear about it. But it was tiny, and I mean really tiny, to the point where it was kind of inconceivable why I would ever, ever, 
ever use this product. Now, I think part of the problem was it was being advertised heavily as a spatula, and so I was thinking only of kitchen uses for it. Um, and many, many people mentioned in the chat room, makeup, crafting, um, there's a whole bunch of other times when uh, you would use hand a lotion, trying to get the hand lift lotion, the exactly. So I gave it a really bad review, uh, mostly because it's just, <laughs> I mean, you can see, there's almost no amount of kitchen thing that would make that tiny of a spatula worth it. Like, unless you're getting saffron gel out of a golden jar. Like, I can't, I can't think of what you would need that little of ingredient for. But in the context of other more expensive things kind of outside of the kitchen, it did, it did end up making more sense. Um, I personally was never able to find a use for my spatty daddy. And so uh, it's still on the worst of <laughs> gadget list. And they were, were they 11 bucks? Uh, yeah, it looks like right now they're actually going for 10. The, uh, the oh, two 10. pack okay. that I bought uh, is 10 okay. bucks. Now, fully confident that this may fit in that category of gadgets that we talk about, that there is a, there is a person for the gadget. There's a problem for this gadget, and it's on the worst of list for me, but it could be on your best of list. And speaking of, this thing does, did get pretty good reviews. 5.5 stars, 4.5 stars. Um, oh, so out of 5,000 people. I fully respect that my opinion may be a controversial opinion on the Spatty Daddy, but uh, did, I did not Most... end up liking the gadget. No. Sims to Rachel has two of them. There you go. See? May, wow. it, it could be controversial, my worst of opinion here, but I'll live with it. I can, I can fall asleep at night still thinking the Spatty Daddy is on my worst of list. Uh, <laughs> I might be being okay. a bit dramatic. Okay, back to you, Diggy D. Yes, to me, uh, if you can go to Amazon and just type in paracord wristband, it helps to see what the paracord wristband looks like. Perfect. Now, I had one of these for probably 15 years, and I kept it on the dashboard of my boat. There they are. And when I would go boating, sometimes I would put it on thinking, if there's an emergency... I just pull the end of this and I will have 11 feet of heavy duty paracord. Uh, I believe it's polyester. And, and then one day I was looking for a gadget and I thought, oh, you know what would be great fun is to take my paracord bracelet. I can always buy another one. They're cheap, like 10 or $11. And I'll pull the end out and then I'll have 11 feet. <laughs> oh, it's not that. It is braided, and if you need emergency, and I love it that they sell, a lot of the people uh, sell it as the Paracord emergency bracelet. Yes. I think even so, in this video, you're saying, okay, imagine someone's leg is broken, and I'm about to craft a tourniquet. <laughs> Just hold yeah. off on bleeding right now. I got to get the Paracord unwrapped. Yes. Yeah. Just give me 35 to 40 minutes and I will be able to pack up that <laughs> It is, uh, as I said, I thought this is a miraculous thing that you unclipped it, pulled the end, and yeah. it had instant cord. I, was the no I had the exact same opinion, way. as I thought that this was a quick release, somehow how they had done yeah. the knots, was after yeah, like, the first just, knot. You know, has five knots in a rope and then he goes and yeah there are no knots that's what i was thinking that's exactly i thought each thing was the friction that held the other one together and it would just and then you'd have cord that is not how this works no at way all. no way <laughs> also it was only like nine feet of cord it wasn't it yeah, seems... I, uh, I, I measured nine feet. Uh, I'm looking on Amazon, and Amazon is saying 11 feet. But, I mean, it, it is tedious. Tedious. <laughs> oh, that is very funny. Yeah, I completely agree with you on uh, on the, the paracord uh, wristband. Um, I, in the... In the um, uh, <clears throat> 
Do you want me to take the last one and then you you'll take the second to last? That way we just keep going back and forth. Oh sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Let's do that. So. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about soap and soap holders because I oh. thought I found the coolest soap holder. Uh, actually, I have it right here. Still still with me. The idea is that, this is for things that look like they shouldn't work month, is that you have two pieces. You have one piece that will go on the wall and then one piece that actually embeds into the soap and then the soap will look like it's floating on the wall. That is the idea of this gadget. So uh, when I went to test it out, I went and got a bar of soap. Uh, I got kind of the, I thought I was being generous, given it like the most popular bar of soap I could think of. Like a Dove bar of soap seems like, like, like I can't think, what, Irish Spring might be more popular than the Dove one. Um, Anyway, I tried over and over and over to get the part that's supposed to embed itself into the soap to stick, and it kept falling out. It kept not holding, uh, having enough force. The magnet on the on the side of the wall wasn't strong enough to hold on to the metal piece, um, and so this brilliant idea of embedding the magnetic piece into the soap just didn't work out and <laughs> just did not work um now that being said there are uh, uh this is the one that i actually ended up buying uh this one right here um there are a lot of these and they don't have the worst of reviews and possibly they also show kind of a more they, they show a different bar of soap than i use so maybe a different more gel like bar of soap would oh maybe it has to have better. a flat bottom i guess yeah i think it needs to be a very specific type of soap where it has a flat bottom um it can't be too large like all of these actually now like in retrospect look a little bit smaller than the dove bar of soap um but there's also other soap holders out there so there's this one right here looks a bit different um, maybe the magnet's a bit stronger than the one that I covered. Um, I saw this one too, which looked kind of cool. And the whole point is to make sure that it doesn't get all like wrinkly and sudsy. Like the water will just drip right off of it too, which is kind of nice. Um, so if this is a gadget that you just are so sad that it's on the worst list, you might be able to find a better one. And if you do, please record it and send it in as a gadget warehouse. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to see the idea that. Is, the idea is great. Yeah, I think the idea is really cool, but I did not have luck with uh, the gadget uh, that I ended up um, uh, reviewing. Yeah. Okay, back because, to you. For yeah. some... I was just going to say, my bathroom has the soap dish built into the wall, and yeah. you put the soap on it, and then when you go to get the soap again, it's already in the drain. Oh, it, that's I, nice. It, oh, it just it's slips so, out. Self-delivers. Yeah. So Yeah, see uh, I have a soap dish and it doesn't have a drain portion for the water. The water just kind of pools in it, which seems completely anti uh, soap dish. Like get at it. Like why does it not have a nice yeah. way to drain out? I don't understand why they weren't thinking of that. So I use it mostly as a shelf for like pump action um things. Uh, and I just oh, okay. don't use a bar of soap. Um, I use like a body wash instead. <laughs> um, okay, back to okay. you. All right, so I bought, there were, I saw a TV ad for it, for the high pressure washer spray garden hose wand. And I thought, you know, I have two dock boxes in the backyard that are really dirty and i had borrowed once my neighbor actually she just lent me the hose because she had this giant power washer with a big motor on it and i thought you know if i could just use my hose with this magic power washer wand i could clean the dock boxes quite often and it would be breezy so if you uh, yeah so 
This, this is, is you trying it with a normal hose. This is the hose that came free, uh, the, the nozzle that came free with the uh, lay flat hose. And this sort of did an okay job, but you would have to spend a lot of time doing it. But then I thought the miracle <laughs> spray, pressure washer, <laughs> nozzle. I You tried it, and I don't think uh, uh, there it, was a it, difference. <laughs> Yeah. I think it needed to, it didn't build any extra pressure, is what no. you're saying. It didn't help. No. And, and I mean, just without using any chemical thing, I think the, the, what they were thinking is if we make this spray tiny and condense it, that'll increase the pressure because of the, it's coming out of a smaller hole. And then I thought, you know what? Just a piece of SOS or Brillo. <laughs> And my old hose is going to be the way to go. And that's what I did. And I think I paid, I think it was 17 or 18 bucks. So if you don't mind scrubbing the, scrubbing <laughs> the uh, dock box first with Brillo. That's a, that is an actual good before and after. Yeah, yes, um, it is. Exactly. Now, <laughs> only, if it only did it with the hose alone, I'd be impressed. <laughs> I, I also I feel like they were very uh, selective in their imagery here. Like this is this isn't that the dirt is caked on there, on that step. It's that it's just resting on that step and it's just yes. blowing it off. It's yes. uh, yeah. It doesn't actually. It's not uh, an I, actual high high pressure situation. No, I, I had a makeup guy once. Um, I forgot where I was up at ABC or wherever I was. And I, I said to the guy, God, what is that hideous thing on the table over there? And he said, oh, it's uh, tape with a uh, hair matted onto it. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, we're shooting a commercial this afternoon about somebody who shaves or something, puts on this lotion, and it takes the hair off. And he said, so they told me we needed hair on a tape so that we could do shot after shot of this theoretically hair being pulled off a person. And we were talking and they said, and we, uh, also we have mixed special dirt for soap commercials where it's like oil mixed up so that it looks really awful. Oh yeah. But it's pretty easy to take off. <laughs> And I'm thinking, well, oh, this, is, this advertising I, seems a little suspicious. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It reminds me of uh, I think I've seen a few videos where they kind of debunk of uh, some some of them, and one of them is in cereal commercials. They use Elmer's glue instead of oh, uh, instead of milk because it would, could stay and it's solid white, you know, and it looks really nice. And another is uh, they would use motor oil on pancake syrup because it would clump and stick together better as it f would fall off the edge of a pancake. Oh, Motor gosh. oil looked way better than uh, the normal sir syrup. It's like flat. Um, you know, they wanted these I nice know. ribbons of, of uh, <laughs> oil, but of uh, syrup and things like that. I know that on hamburger ads, they use magic markers for the grill marks right so that they don't have to actually fry it too much so that it stays a decent shape right exactly exactly and, and the very first uh deception i ever heard of was in soup commercials they would fill the bottom of the bowl with marbles yes and then when they poured the soup in, all the ingredients would stick out of the soup. Like, this vegetable soup <laughs> has, has so many, many vegetables. vegetables. Wow. Yes. yes Can't even go to the bottom of the bowl. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, anyway. anyway. So don't believe everything you see on advertising. That's why you can believe us. And That's these are right. the you worst. <laughs> We show you how it really works. Exactly. We're held nothing back. We're like consumer reports. We can't be faked. Um, 
Well, that wraps it up for our worst of 2023 uh, gadgets. Uh, you can look forward to next week. We will be covering the best of 2023. And then after that, we will be with so many CES gadgets. We're going to be covering CES gadgets till the end of the month. Uh, so it'll it'll be a great month here on uh, on the Gizwiz. Um, I guess let's say thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting our show. You guys are absolutely incredible. If you want to give back to the Gizwiz, please consider giving back at patreon.com slash gizwiz or our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon tab and then there's a PayPal link on that website if you want to give via PayPal. Thank you guys so much for your support. You can watch the show live just about every Thursday. Next week, we will not be live because I'll be it in Vegas uh, at CES. Uh, but uh, there's a schedule at the top of the website. Uh, all you have to do is go to gizwiz.tv to watch the live stream. If uh, we're not live, catch all of our previous episodes there, gizwiz.tv. Uh, oh my gosh. Yes, get, you're going to learn. We what get to watch <laughs> it. What the heck what is it and heck? what the heck was it? What the heck will it be? Um, I actually knew this one, Dickie D. Did you know it really? I did, because I think I had bought it for a crappy corner at some point. Um, I think I had. I had bought it recently. Um, did a lot of people know it? Only a three, one person knew it was from XO. Yes. And the brand name and the model number. And then someone else said, uh, two other people said, it's a brush for cleaning keyboards. Yes. So I remember so specifically, three people had it. this would slide out and there's a brush. And then yes. this is like a microfiber squeegee. And you could take the cap off and like run it al along your screen um, yes. to clean it out. And where is it? There it is. That's there it. it That's it. That is so funny. Yeah, no, I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh, I know exactly that gadget. <laughs> I can't believe other people didn't know. That I, no, if I, I was... I expected, I expected more people to know what it was too. Wow. That is so funny. Okay. Well, we love well, the funny answers more. Uh, the the funny the answers are very cute. Super wide lipstick <laughs> that applies color instantly to so whole funny. lips. Uh, something at the hospital where they dispose of used needles. It, oh, it yeah. could be that. Yeah. Machine to de-lint your precious clothes could work as that. I love this. Uh, kids, baby's first roll-on deodorant. <laughs> uh, prototype for the first electric razor from Skullman. Mustache duster. Uh, we got that several times. <laughs> People are so great. Breadless toaster. For people on a diet. Ah, I like that one. Yeah. A credit card cleaner. You stick the card in, ah. push up and down on that little lever, says I Tom. I like it. Uh, Norelco underarm, uh, underarm shaver and antiperspirant in <laughs> one, says John. Also, Dan had a funny answer. Martha Stewart had one of these for years, and even she couldn't find a use for it. <laughs> That's too clever. That's, that's Isn't like... that clever? <laughs> uh, undetectable. Uh, here's another crazy one from Gus. Undetectable travel container for chattering fake teeth to evade airport <laughs> security and conceal the fact that you are a funny person. Wow. <laughs> that was like a journey. I feel like I read an entire chapter of a book. Uh, <laughs> The, the poor guy is a clown, but doesn't want anybody to I discover. Know. I think there's a movie in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, at home, practice uh, airplane potty. Yeah, kind of gives that vibe. Self-cleaning self jumbo eraser. I like it. <laughs> uh, pat button, push down on the red button, and an alarm will sound. And then another one from uh, Eric, which is funny. Portable Pop-Tart toaster for when you're traveling. Did you see the Pop-Tart bowl? No. <laughs> the Pop-Tart bowl? Yes, this became the biggest social media win. I mean, this was all over Twitter. I could not 
stop seeing this. The Pop, Pop Tarts had a Pop Tart Bowl for uh, college football, and their main point of it, or like one of the main like bits of it, was that their mascot was edible. And so they had the Pop Tart come out here, and at the end of the game, they lower the Pop Tart into a giant toaster. <laughs> okay, this was actually this was actually one of my favorite tweets. I asked if it was offensive to eat a Pop-Tart in front of a Pop-Tart mascot and its handler yelled out, it's their dream. And then their mascot grabbed a Pop-Tart out of my hand and started force feeding it to me while making soft grunting noises. Oh my God. So the whole, the whole joke was that, by the way, this has 51,000 likes. The whole joke was that the Pop-Tart was looking forward to be eaten. So they oh dropped the Pop Tart. Oh my gosh, this article really buried the lead here. They didn't show the edibleness of the. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember seeing the photo. I just thought it was uh, an ad. No, well, it kind of was a long, big ad, but. Yeah. But so the Pop Tart was lowered into the. Um, <laughs> into the, <laughs> the toaster. I just, I a giant toaster. Here he is being lowered. You just saw the edible mascot. He came out of a toaster, a giant toaster. And then he gets a sign that even says dreams do come true as he's like being lowered into oh the toaster. And then they start eating him. And it looks absolutely morbid and crazy. Oh my God. It was so funny. Um, oh yeah, Cheez-It came out with a... Uh, they had the cheese it bowl. By the way, this all happened not that far from me. It happened in um, Orlando here. Um, oh my god! But yeah, they actually ended up eating the pop tart. And and there's one image of it with just the eye. I, how they ended up making this pop tart is that that eye was not edible, and so <laughs> there was just an eye left at the end of it. Oh my gosh! It was very 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 funny. Um, anyway, absolute best, like, moment of, uh, <laughs> of 2023. That is the pop very football. funny. Um, okay, well, all that well, is well, to take, say. Take, a peek, take your guess at the new gadget. Exactly, we have a new what the heck is it. Oh my gosh, this is it. Um, this is, oh, this is obvious. Uh, obvious to me what this gadget is. I hate to give it away first week, but, um... This is a bubblegum dispenser for those who are trying to quit. And they're trying to quit bubblegum. And it has oh. no way to, to get the bubblegum out. It doesn't even have bubblegum in it. But it's a bubblegum <laughs> dispenser for those who are trying to quit bubblegum. Okay. okay, that's good. Uh, so Yeah, that's sorry good. to give it away first, first week. But if you think you know what this is, get a guess in. Six Mad Magazines for Correct Answers. Twelve Mad Magazines for Funny, Clever, or Hilarious Answers. So get a guess in over at gizwiz.biz. That wraps it up for our worst episode of 2024. So we'll see you next week. I'll be here.